Here is a cheap and chirpy one transistor CW transmitter with a surprisingly high output power. It uses less than 10 components and can be heard thousands of kilometres away. It was initially described on SV3ORA's website. I'll have a link to that below. As you can see, the circuit is extremely simple. It uses almost any NPN transistor that you might have, a crystal, a coil that you need to wind yourself, a trimmer capacitor, and very few other components. It worked for me first time. If you are after a very simple one transistor transmitter project, then I'd recommend this design. The transistor I used was a BD139, capable of around two watts output. I used 12 volts power source, but you could go for a higher voltage and possibly get more power from it. You'll notice in this diagram the dots on the coils. These just mean that this end of the coil needs to be nearest to this end in order to get proper feedback and therefore oscillation. I was just happy to have two turns with a 50 ohm output. That's more convenient if you want to pass it through a low pass filter on its way to a 50 ohm impedance antenna. But if you're less worried about filtering and wanted to match a variety of antennas, then you'd have, as SV3ORA described, more turns and various taps, so you could find the point that gives a best power transfer. The transmitter, as presented, doesn't have its own low-pass filter. That's why I've added this one, described in a previous video. The hardest part of the construction is winding the coil. There are three separate coils. Two have two turns, and one has 14 turns. More than 14 was specified, but because my piece of pipe was slightly wider than what was originally described, I had two less turns to give a similar amount of inductance. Another thing I also did was that I had both two turn coils underneath the main coil of 14 turns. That makes it easier to add or subtract turns for the larger coil if required. How much current does the transmitter draw? One thing you'll note though is the current starts off high and goes low. That must indicate some form of heating. Just touching the transistor it isn't very hot and neither are the outer cases of the crystals but I suspect there's some sort of temperature variation somewhere, possibly inside the crystals. It might be worth substituting larger crystals which can accommodate higher currents to see if that effect is still there. We'll also note that I've put two crystals in parallel in an effort to divide the current between them. The power meter reads 2 watts full scale deflection. The transmitter output starts at around 1.3 watts. But as you can see, it is somewhat inconsistent. This may indicate some heating effect. The heatsink of the Output transistor hardly gets warm and I can't feel anything on the crystals but there may be something internally that I don't know about. The frequency shift is an indication that not all is well. If you used bigger types of crystals like older types 
then that might give you a better note and more constant output power. This is the trimmer capacitor at close to minimum capacitance. When I screw the trimmer down so the capacitance is more, the output power tends to fall off. To see how far this transmitter goes, I tried various web SDRs. The furthest I could hear the signal last night was New Zealand, a distance of about 2500 kilometers. The next day I tried it again. I was able to hear the signal around 1000 kilometers distant via web SDRs in New South Wales. I've now connected a bigger crystal, HC6 size. The note sounds better, and the output power is more consistently higher. But it still drops off a little bit. Current consumption is around 380 milliamps, and a bit more consistent. The lesson is to use the biggest crystal you have in a single transistor transmitter as you'll likely get the best results and cleanest signal. This is reception on VK2AAK's SDR receiver with the bigger crystal. As you can hear, there's much less chirp, and the signal is good enough to use on the air. Our final test will be with the ZL1 PWM SBR around 2,500 kilometres away. It's the early afternoon, not even 2pm here or 4pm in New Zealand. So I'm only half expecting any signals would be received. This cheap and chirpy transmitter has been a fun project. As I mentioned before, it worked first time for me. If you're after something that's very simple but delivers a surprisingly high amount of power, then something like this could be worth building. Just bear in mind that there are some compromises, particularly in how the signal sounds.